What's up, y'all? If you're looking for a CFO level dashboard and you're looking to build it in Excel, there's reasons for that, I promise. Here's an outline that you can follow. What's going on, everybody? I'm Jack Tompkins with Pineapple Consulting Firm, always trying to help the small business world become more data driven. So if you are a CFO of a small business, or a fractional CFO, or just the finance person uh, of a startup, and you want to build some sort of projection, some sort of dashboard so that you can manage uh, your finances and manage towards your budget and all this other stuff, we got you covered. We're going to give you an outline that keeps things easy to use, easy to update, and easy to understand. Okay, those are the big three. I'm going to say them again plenty of times, I'm sure. But first and foremost, why the heck would we even use Excel in this age of AI, right? Why not use something else that's out there, right? quick use case for Excel. Now, this is nothing against AI. We have a lot of tools that deal with automation and we have automated QuickBooks dashboards, and all sorts of stuff. But we get a lot of CFOs that we talk to and a lot of business owners that still like Excel uh, or Google Sheets. We're working on that video. We'll publish the link when it's ready. But the reason the use case for Excel is it's constant customization. There is nothing more customizable than Excel. Um, it does require some manual effort, absolutely. But from a lot of people that I talk to, that's what they're looking for. They want just a little bit of manual effort, you know, still easy to update, still all this stuff. It's, it's not completely automated, but being able to change forecasting, being able to do things on the fly, having some skin in the game is what it comes down to. If you have to do that little bit of manual work, it keeps you interested and it makes you kind of play the what if game and see the results of your actions as you're doing it in real time. So the, you know, the updating is relatively easy. There is still a use case for Excel for anything in this CFO world. Um, but again, it needs to be easy to understand for you, for your team or your clients. It needs to be easy to update. It needs to be easy to use, for example, changing inputs or something like that. So we're gonna jump through an example, give you an outline, a few steps to follow and uh, walk through a relatively complex looking example that is um, fairly straightforward behind the scenes. So let's dive in. What's up y'all, sorry for the interruption. If you're a fan of this, I'm sure you are a fan of dashboards as well. We got a new one for you, QuickBooks Online. Everybody uses it, but the reporting isn't great. It's no secret. So we made a product that automatically syncs up with it. Looks a little bit like that, okay? And it is your metrics, in your brand colors, the way you want it, updated automatically. Click the link, mention the code U250 for 50% off your onboarding. Now, back to the video. Okay, so we're gonna end up making a dashboard that looks like this. We've got all the main KPIs up here, or at least some main KPIs up here. Um, we've got some revenue breakdowns, some scenarios, some trends, all sorts of good stuff. And as always, we have a date selector so you can get fancy with uh, what kind of dates you wanna actually see in the dashboard. But before we get to this, before we get to the projections, all that stuff, we need to start with step one. So step one is the data intake. Now, this will look very familiar. This is directly from QuickBooks. Um, this is QuickBooks Online. Uh, desktop is very similar. Zero is very similar. Any accounting software that you use will have something like this. And all you have to do is create a consistent, repeatable data intake. So this is profit loss by month for about two years. And all we do is paste values into cell A1. And then we have a macro that runs that puts it into database format. The importance of this is that one, we know that this download comes in, in a very consistent format from QuickBooks or whatever accounting software you use. And step two, putting it into this database format, which I'll walk through in a second, keeps things very repeatable and very easy to uh, do a sum if formula from, or do a uh, pivot table from, wherever you want to summarize your information from here. So this database format, you'll notice over here, I won't highlight it all, but this is our profit and loss statement. These are the accounts that we had on this page, right? This sheet, they just get transferred over here. We then tag it with a date. We carry over the amount. And then we have these three are formulas that just trim the accounts up because you'll notice that a lot of them start with this little buffer in the beginning, and that can be kind of annoying. Um, and then we mess with the date, so we have some flexibility there. If I scroll down, you'll see once we get to February, it is the same income statement, right? 
we just hit it with a new date, we grab the new fields, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is something that you can build a macro for. Um, that's that's our preferred way of doing this. Uh, you know, use ChatGPT to write a macro for you. It'll get you most of the way there. Um, the other option is actually to go online and use a coupler or a tool called Coupler, couple with an R at the end. We'll post our affiliate link below in the description. Use that for an automated version of this. And let me show you that really, really quick. Okay, so this is Coupler's homepage. Just gonna go super quick here. You can log into your account, all this other stuff, and then you can add an importer. What you can essentially do is select, I want QuickBooks reports. That's where the profit and loss statement comes. I'm gonna dump it into Excel. You could do Google Sheets. You could do any of these different options here. Um, they do have some templates that are in Looker Studio. Um, we do that as well. And you can just set up this um, automated data pull. You can go through and set it up from scratch here. You, you set a time frame, you set a destination, all that stuff. And it comes through at the transaction level, um, or you could do at the summary level as well. So uh, pretty straightforward once you get in here. This is a great way to automate this data pull if you don't want to do the quick CSV download um, from QuickBooks or something like that. So that is step one in taking the data. Make sure that it is consistent and very repeatable. OK, so now we're on to step two, getting some detailed historical trends. So we're back in Excel here and we're looking at the at a fairly detailed level, some, getting some historical trends. So how we do this, this is in our detailed view tab. Um, it pulls everything from this PL summary. We have some pivot tables that are off to the right here that are intentionally hidden uh, so our clients can't mess with it candidly. And uh, it pulls everything into this detailed view. So you'll notice that this is essentially one formula. It's not essentially, it is one formula. So we are just doing a get pivot data and it goes across all of these different dates. And if I scroll, we are always up to date with the current month. So this current month will basically look up the maximum date and say, okay, that's where we are. This date will be that date minus one month. This date will be that date plus one month. So this is part of the easy to update thing. Always make sure that you have a flexible date for the current month. And then all these other formulas are the same down here for all the different expenses. And that way we can see this quick little 12 month trend if we wanna check this out. And then we also have projections that are gonna be in the next step that we go through. But these historical trends are important to see, especially if you are in that finance scene, you need to see exactly what something was in a very easy to understand way. We recommend doing something like this, but even more importantly, back in the dashboard tab, we want to make sure that we have some historical trends that are visual too. So this, you can hover and see um, what the value was, right? It takes a little bit. Excel can be kind of funky with this. This has our historical trends for the two things that we've selected in this example uh, for this fake company, which is revenue and the ending cash position. So make sure that this date, the current date, is always flexing with the most up-to-date data and make sure that you have some detailed options along with some visual options for historical trends. And that is it for step two. Okay, on to step three. So this is create inputs for projections. Okay, we wanna make projections and we want easy inputs for it. So we know that we've got this easy to update now. All we're doing is downloading a CSV. We're using some automated data through Coupler. We've got some historical trends and now we want to scroll this way and be able to make some projections, okay? So all of these things in blue are future looking at this point in time. How do we do that? We have an input dashboard. So you wanna make this as easy to use as possible, right? So we've got the easy to update. This is the easy to use part. We want this to be, hey, instead of 15% growth, I think we're gonna have 20% growth here. Great, and instead of our, you know, those, we've got bear, so low, medium, high, or bear assumed bull scenarios. And so if we adjusted that organic growth, whatever that category is, up to 20%, maybe our aggressive scenario or our bull scenario is 30%, right? You can see that all we have to do, anything in this um, sort of light yellow is an adjustable thing and all of the inputs are held here. So 
um, just a quick rundown. We've got some owner salary that comes through, some averages there. We've got some equity transactions over here. We can get into all that, but the biggest thing is what is our projection home base? And that is this input dashboard here. So in each of those three scenarios, you can choose the type of change, or the type of forecast that you're doing. You can make the year over year growth, whatever you want it to be there. And it can be effective in a specific date into the future, right? Same thing on the expense side. We wanna make sure that everything is held in this one spot. So when we go over here, everything gets impacted by our selection. Now this is a crazy formula, don't worry about it. All it does, and I'll show you even the back end here, we've got our bear scenario looking forward, our zoom scenario, and our bull scenario looking forward. And all it does is say, depending on what you select here, and notice if we change this to bull, that moves there, right? So whatever you select here will control everything else. And that control impacts this detailed view. And it also impacts these scenarios here that are forward looking and this projection scenario as well. So without going into all of the nitty gritty back end of this, you always wanna make sure that your inputs are held in one place and that any projections that you have don't have any hard coding and they are just based off of the inputs that are changed in this one section to create your projections. And that's it for step three, make sure it's centralized. Okay, on to step four. So now we get to create the pretty picture. This is create the dashboard. Step four, create the dashboard. So we are back here where we started and we've got our main KPIs up here. We've got all these trends and all this other stuff, right? How the heck do we make all of this? And most importantly, make it flexible as well, right? So all of this comes from just a few places and really just one place. This detailed view that we looked at, the reason why it was so important to create in the beginning is because we're gonna pull a lot of information from it and it has everything nicely detailed out for us. And I will scroll down real quick. So we've got a lot of expenses. So I'm gonna hide all the individual expenses. And then we've grouped things into these five overarching buckets of expenses. And you can see here that this is a lot cleaner to look at, right? So we've got our revenue up here. We've got our expenses here. We've got whatever impacts uh, that aren't captured in the PL, like equity transactions or owner's draws. And then that results in our net income. So this is still our PL statement, just a little bit more cleaned up with projections as well. So everything in here will come just from a table that we create over here. So if I scroll way over here, it's not the prettiest thing, right? But uh, we've got, this is always important to have some dates that you can flex between depending on how the dates are input. We've got the current year, which we pull from the most current date, right? And then we just list out January to December for each of those years. And we hit that with a, uh, date number as well, just with the way that the dates come in. For the trend graphs, we just make some simple things here. These are directly pulled from the detailed view, as you can see, and it just lists things out as actuals or projections. And you'll see there that we've got this revenue trend, right? January to January, and then February ongoing. The actuals end for our current month and the projections start for our next month. And you can see how that looks over here when we look at this graph. You notice that these are two different bars. So this is an actual bar. And if we could highlight, we could see that the actuals are zero for these future months. But obviously, since they're zero, we can't quite see them. So the only thing that's left is the projection. And we just color it so it's a little bit different so you can tell that we're projecting forward. Same thing in this ending cash position too. So this is essentially, how do we get this information into a summarized view like this? Well, we just create some summary tables over here. All this is 100% automated because it's all formula driven, right? So we've got our different projection graphs here. It works the exact same thing uh, or exact same way as the trend graphs that we were just looking at. And all of these go right to the detailed view. So we don't even create a middleman here. We just go right to the detailed view and everything is going to be based off this date selector. We compare it to prior year. You could throw in a budget here. You could throw prior month in here, anything like that. We've just defaulted to prior year. 
um, along with this too. This is all just straight from the detail tab. So to create this visual summary, this is the easy to understand part, right? This is the this is the part that you need your clients, your team, your leadership, whatever, to be able to easily understand where are we currently, how are we doing, and where are we looking in the future. If you have this date selector and you have those projections and you have the current state, you can easily get your financial health of your entire company in a matter of really 15 to 30 seconds when it's all built, right? Because you need to look at this. We're down here. Why is revenue down here? Well, product income, we know from conversations was a little bit down this month, but our profit was still killing it. So we're doing great there. So all in all, we're doing OK and we're looking positive in the future, right? Easy, done, there we go. That is the dashboard part of the easy to understand um, part of the big three. Easy to update, easy to use, easy to understand. We're back, we're out of Excel real quick for step five. So step five is the last step here and it is just the conversation with your client or your leadership team. Right, so this is the important part. Making it a financially data-driven conversation is huge. Having a tool like that, that has projections, that has the easy to view dashboard, easy to understand, all that stuff, it changes the conversation and it allows you to be financially savvy, even if you're not. So we highly recommend using something like this, uh, whether it's in Excel or not, doesn't really matter. Um, we've got QuickBooks dashboards out there that are fully automated. We've got all sorts of things, but we highly recommend using something like this because it keeps your team accountable. It allows for changes on the fly. Once you build it, it is very, very, very easy to use and you don't have to build it as fancy as we just walked through. Those are the overarching steps. So please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, comments, concerns. We are more than happy to help as always and keep being data driven, everybody. We'll talk soon.